Hey guys, Caleb's Cards here. Come at you with a new episode and new season of reading through some of my old family's letters. Um, we are actually moving on into the World War II era, um, and we're going to look at a few uh, short letters uh, from a couple of great uncles of mine um, who served in the Navy during World War II. So um, this episode is going to be about Uncle Ted. I have uh, about three or four letters here that I can read for, for you. They're not very long. Uh, they're pretty short, but uh, I think he was obviously, looks like he was maybe pressed for time there, so just kind of was able just to kind of put down what he could. Um, they're not like super, I guess, uh, detailed about like battles or anything like that, um, like in the World War One or Civil War letters, but I think it's still kind of interesting and cool, especially for those of you who like World War II like me and like sending to World War II veterans. And, uh, you know, these are my ancestors who uh, sacrificed and were willing to sacrifice their lives for this. Um, they did both obviously make it back, but uh, just thought this would be kind of a cool series to do. So this is Season 2, Episode 1 of Read Through May family's uh, old letters so oh let me show you this real quick this is the oops, this is the first letter dated from November 3rd or 19th I'm sorry 1942 so a little bit after Pearl Harbor so this is my my great uncle Ted he uh, sadly passed away kind of young um, I think it was uh, late 90s maybe I believe it was the either mid to late 90s. Um, he was probably still, I think he was still in maybe about 60, so he wasn't very old. Um, uh, it was kind of a shock to everybody. I, I never got to meet him. I don't think, I may not have even been born yet. But uh, here's a picture of him. I thought I'd show, I know. Let's see if I can put a better scan in there as well for you. But uh, this first letter, dated November 19th, 1942, is coming back from Camp Peorg, and that's P-E-O-R-G. He says, Dear Mom, well, another day is over, and what a day. I got a letter from Bernadette for Burdett and Helen today. I think he might have met Bernadette. Uh, it rained the afternoon hard, but it's cleared up tonight. The moon is beautiful. We had our chemical workers today, and we had to take off our works in gas chambers, and I am still crying from... Something is a, I couldn't make out the word. So I definitely need to go back one of these days and see if I can figure out some of these words. And by the way, these letters, I um, typed them up for my grandparents to read many years ago. My mom and helped me. And uh, yeah, so it was lots of fun. There's still some that are incomplete that I need to try and work on. But uh, this is all word for word as best as we could tell. So if it doesn't make grammatical sense, that is why I'm reading it word for word. But he says, uh, you know, he was crying from doing something in the gas chambers. Um, and I can't make out the next words. It goes, plus to tell smell if it smells strong for some reason still in our clothes, I guess. Uh, and then there's the letter D, more days, I'd be 18. Does it seem possible I'd be home yet if I hadn't enlisted? So... Um, he's not quite 18 yet, so he's, uh, so he must have signed up at 17. But I'm glad I didn't wait. I'd be out foot or almost before I would have gone. Darn it, I get time, time to write, won't he? W-O-N-Y, I'm not sure, I've seen that word before on some of these letters, I don't know why. <laughs> I try to write you once a week, or a day, I mean. Uh, I have to go clean a spill, head in a minute. We're just about rooting tonight, they have such a fine... Well, Mom, good night. Got got to go to work. With lots of love, Ted. So, this one doesn't make any sense at all. But it seems like he's, uh, you know, being... He's in training, so he's... Obviously, he's enlisted, but uh, 17 years old, almost 18. Not able to go to war yet, but uh, he's um, still uh, working, so... Um, Clean up some spills, so he might have been on like some sort of like a hazmat team or something like that. So uh, yeah, again, I'll show you that so you can pause that, you can read that. I'm not making it up. <laughs> then uh, we'll go to some other letters that he has here. 
one's a little bit longer. I think it's a front and back letter. Oops. There we go. Can you see it? There we go. I can't see it. <laughs> All right. So this is dated from Ulysses, Pennsylvania, January 8th, 1944, 12 p.m. Dear Mom, how are you and your family? Well, I'm listening to the radio, the Grand Opera. Uh, Grandpa's taking his bath and Rita's in Wellsburg. I guess I want to go to Betty's to hog. Well, that's a question mark. <laughs> But I got in la late last night and he didn't come from Genesee today, so I had chores and housework here to do. I mop all noon downstairs and sweep too and dusted and polished the furniture. Carliana's coming tomorrow, they said to leave clean for her, but it makes her awfully tired when Jim here it is harder as I clean first I could. Christmas Day Cub plus Carolyn and Jim went away and we're going to have chicken time. Uh, it says timer, maybe I think it means dinner, and didn't have the biscuit meal. They did come so kindly, I tried to make them, and they turned out terrific. So Cub and she thought three, they came just as I took them out of the oven. Boy. Cub plus Carolyn plus Bruce, and there's another question mark, so another word we couldn't make up. And Ron, have been so swell to me, I don't think I can ever repay them for me also. Granddad. Well, Betty's better, but is not too well yet. So Granddad, I believe, would be Theodorus Howe. Um, she worked too hard and has a job to take care of Nancy and Peggy when she's sick. Well, I got in 2 o'clock last night, or this morning. <laughs> uh, we went on a, and then we couldn't make up this word blank, uh, to Wellsville to shake. Well, I got courage enough to be to skate the first time I was ever on skates. I went on the floor twice, got so I could balance myself good. So, well, man, that helped me said. Okay, that doesn't make sense, but. Boy, do we have lots and lots of fun. Craig fell and ripped his new suit, but he had fun, I guess. Uh, and then another blank that we couldn't figure out. And Ellen and I were the only ones which hadn't skated before. We were there for four hours. And before we got through, we could skate as good as come to us meet. It was over class party we went and blank. But Miss McElord plus Miss Souse, blank Robbins, went with us. Boy, they sure can have a lot of fun with them. Ever a Miss Macklin? And then that's a question mark, and up storch, also the question mark, in school. Tell everybody hello down there. Have you heard from Jack lately? I have it. So that's my Uncle Jack. Uh, P.S. I hope you like this letter. Love, Ted. So I think he must be on furlough. I don't think he was wounded that he would, but I could be wrong. I don't remember hearing any stories of him being wounded and coming back, but because uh, 1942, he was not quite 18 there in that letter we read, so he would be... Uh, but this time, probably like 19, going on 20. So, let's go ahead and read this one and see. So this is dated from February 14th, 1944. And I believe this is the last one that I have for him. It says, hi, y'all. I got your letter and card today. Boy, it's beginning to look like winter. It's snowing now, the wind is blowing, and Gramps says it would surprise him if we got two or three feet of snow. Uh, thanks for, and then we couldn't make this word out, so blank. I haven't been anywhere to get anything, so don't, or blank. Well, I haven't seen Bruce in four or five weeks, nor Carolyn or Cub. I worked the butcher, blank, blank, so maybe like uh, butcher cutter or something, that's what it said. And then a blank again cuts and guess how I blank. I found an, ho an old from and lost blank pair pline. That's also the question mark, but that's how it was spelled in the letter. P-L-I-E-N. And went then for blank. Unfortunately, this letter has a lot of blanks. <laughs> and I could find any there also, but they worn good. Betty invited us over to dinner Sunday, but Reed would go, so Grandpa and I didn't. Are you going to bring Tag up for me? Uh, Tag was... Uh, Uncle Ted and my grandma's favorite dog. For me, I would like her very much. I hope you are all okay and the jock is blank. I heard from such shit on the dog and it was its long ink letter I've ever had from it. It was about 75 words or less. I must write him now. So long. P.S. Don't worry. I blank blank that evening. Blank blank. Again, <laughs> we couldn't make those out. And there's another short um, that he did later on the next day. On February 15th, just another line to ask you a question. You said some being about 
So I think he's been something about Hugh Children. I haven't heard anything about him. We know to get a line off to blank, Harold R, and then to bed. Good night, Ted. So, Uncle Ted at this time was obviously back home, so I'm not sure if uh, he if he was wounded or something happened that he uh, came back. I'll have to do some more digging, and if I find out, I'll come back to it, I guess. Um, but uh, I was definitely happy to find that picture of him. Now we found that the uh, couple Sundays ago, so uh, that was pretty cool. So yeah, I think we have a lot more letters from Uncle Jack. I think I think that's yep. I'm, uh, I have a ton of letters from Uncle Jack, so um, we could probably do a two-part uh, series on that, and uh, should be fun. So thanks for watching and bearing with me here. I um, hope you enjoyed. This is kind of fun just to go through them again. So and just opportunity to share them with you if you're interested. So. Thanks for watching, really appreciate it, and I'll talk to you guys all later.